When I was a kid, my neighbor, his name was King, he would restore old cars and he had an Atlas lathe and he was always making something on it. I always thought it was neat and I always kind of wanted one and I have just been unable to get my hands on one. So a couple weeks ago, I got the idea, what if I would buy some parts, some Atlas lathe parts and build an Atlas lathe from scratch? I know, I know, it's a really dumb idea. It's a really good way to spend all my money on, on dumb things, but so that's kind of what I'm going to do in this video. I bought a bed for an Atlas 12 inch lathe and I'm going to start here. I figure what I can do is over time, uh, keep an eye out for good deals and buy Atlas lathe parts. And when I get enough parts together, build myself an Atlas lathe. So what you're seeing here is a 12 inch bed. I don't know anything about it. It's got no numbers, it's got no serial numbers on it. The only thing I could find was cast into the side is the number 942 and that's cast on the underside here. So I have no idea what this, what model this bed came from. So this one has quite a bit of wear, especially up here right around the headstock. There's about 10 thousandths of an inch wear. I will probably keep an eye out for a better bed. Um, but I think this will be a good platform at least to start on. And then as I find better parts, I can do some upgrades later. So that's the first thing I want to do is I want to clean this thing up and I want to just touch up the paint. And then we'll see if we can get some feet for it and I'll see if I can find a headstock. So the headstock and the gearbox come from an Atlas commercial lathe, which is built on a bed with half inch ways. The bed I have here only has 3 8 ways. So we're going to have to come up with a shim and shim somewhere. I think we'll probably end up shimming the headstock upward so that we get proper lead screw alignment, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. The other concern with this headstock is that, and if you can see this here, so it's got this gear train which sits below the headstock. The bed I'm using doesn't accommodate that. So this bed was made for the headstock with the back gears behind the headstock or behind the spindle. So we're going to have to find a way to cut the bed here, cut into the ways and provide the clearance we need for this headstock to sit flat on these ways. While I had the headstock on here, I took a sharpie and I traced along the inside of the casting so I could see where it sat. This outline here is where the larger back gear interferences with the, the ways. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start small and I think I'm going to cut out this section you see hatched and then we'll try and fit the headstock and see how it fits. And if it's not enough, then we'll continue to expand outward until we reach the outside edge or this outline of that casting. I've marked it out in blue so I can see where I need to cut or where I think I need to cut. So let's do that. I'll switch over and we'll try and cut this out with the Dremel. What I'm using here is a 3 8 carbide burr. The Dremel did a really good job. It was slow. It took me a couple of hours and I made one hell of a mess. Everything in the shop is now covered in this fine powdery iron dust. But check out how that did. I took out about a half an inch on each side and now I've got enough clearance that I can set the headstock on here and it doesn't sit on that big gear. And I'll show you, we'll put it on. But hopefully this is all I have to remove from these ways to put that commercial headstock on this non-commercial base. So there are two holes in the lathe bed that the headstock bolts to and I was happy to find that those holes on this commercial headstock line up with the, the holes on this bed. These are those two bolts. They, um, they came with the headstock but they fit perfectly in this bed. 
So there's a third bolt that'll mount in the front of the headstock. So that needs to go through some sort of a clamp that will hold the headstock to the bed. It clamps on the ways. Before I can put the headstock on, I've got two things left to do there. I need to make the clamp that holds the front of it to the ways, and then I need to give the thing a good cleaning. I'm gonna pour some mineral spirits in a bucket and just use a brush and kind of give it a quick bath. This is a piece of 3 16 inch steel. I hacked this out of some scrap I had left over from the Digest frame repair. I scored it, bent it over, and welded it, and then I used the mill to cut a little slot in here to give me some adjustability. When you tighten this down, it pulls that up and clamps between the ways. All right, I'd say we're good. That thing is clamped. It's not going anywhere. And look at that grass out there. There's this beautiful orange sunset and it's making everything. Here, I'll show you. But look at that. Isn't that beautiful? What a wonderful day in December for this. So now that I've cut clearance in the bed and I've been able to mount the headstock, the next thing I really want to do is get the, the quick change gearbox mounted. So right now it's held in place with a couple of two by fours. I did mount the door or the cover. So I've got the guard on here. I wanted to make sure it fit correctly. And then I also found a lead screw. This one is three quarter inch and it measures 39 and seven eighths. I don't know what lathe it's really meant for, but it is just about the perfect length for this one. So it's fed in through and it is fully engaged in the gearbox. And then on the far end, I ended up finding a fairly good deal on a commercial lead screw bearing. So I think I've got everything in place now where it works and it works like it's supposed to. I'm not getting any weird binding. The gear alignment seems good. So I think this is the exact location where I want to put this gearbox. It's mounted with three bolts. It's got two through the front here and then one down through the top. I don't know how I'm going to do the one from the top. I'll, I'll show you what I mean in a moment. So I'm going to scribe this and then I'm going to pull this all back apart. I'm going to drill these and tap these. And the bolts that came with it were 5 16 18, so I'm going to use those. Here's a better look at where those holes need to be drilled. I added a little yellow paint so you can see them better. This one's really close to the edge. I hope that's not a problem. There's nothing behind it that I think, you know, will be of concern other than how thin it is. And then the one on top, let's see if you can see that. Given where it sits, there's not enough clearance between the headstock to actually get that bolt in there. It would, it sits like over half of it. So I'm not entirely certain how I'm gonna do this one or what to do with this one. So I'm gonna drill these two holes down here and then we'll bolt that back up and see how that fits and then see if we can figure out what to do with this. Alright, so this rather precarious looking arrangement here is how I'm going to drill these two holes. I've got the bed clamped to the bench, I've got the drill press clamped to the bench, and I've checked with a square to make sure the bit is square to the surface here in both directions, and it is. So let's drill these holes. So the next thing I'm going to do, I need to clean that quick change up. So I'm going to clean that up just like I did the headstock where I put it in mineral spirits and I clean it with a brush. So 
So I've given the gearbox about three rounds in mineral spirits with the brush. It's about as clean as I'm going to get it with it as an assembly. If I want to give it a really good clean, I need to pull it apart. I don't want to do that just yet. I really want to get it onto the lathe and get the lathe working first. And then once everything's sorted out there, I can pull things back apart and do maintenance. So I think everything's good here and it's ready to go back on the lathe. I'm going to check alignment here, make sure this gear is not going to hit. It looks like we've got good clearance. All right, I'm happy with that. It seems like it's going to work. There we go. I picked up some half inch needle thrust bearings on Amazon, uh, but I will need to make spacers. So when this is installed, it looks like I'm going to need about a half inch spacer on each side. I don't have spacers. I'm going to have to make some on the lathe, but I think for starters, just to get it together, I'm going to 3D print some. So I'm going to do a spacer and I'm going to do the thrust washer and then the support bushing, I guess is what we call this. And then we'll put the other thrust washer assembly in. I'm in the other spacer. And I'm hoping when I tighten this down, it'll center around this bracket and provide the support for the end of the lead screw. So I've got it set now, right where I want it. So I kind of want it just to see that everything worked. So I'm doing it kind of, I don't know, this isn't the right way to do this, but I'm driving the chuck with my drill. And I wanted to watch and just see that everything was doing what it was supposed to do. So check that out, right? I'm pretty happy so far. Now I just need to get it to where it'll drive itself. So it's been a couple months since I last worked on the Atlas lathe. There's been a lot going on. It's uh, the Christmas season, but more to that. I've needed a countershaft assembly. They sell for stupid money, and so it took me two months of searching every day until one popped up that was in a price range that I thought was acceptable. So that's this one here. So it seems to be in good shape. It's dirty, and the bearings are pretty stiff. So what I want to do is just take it apart, clean everything up, grease it really well, and put it back together. So here's how that counter shaft turned out. I've got it all back together. The shaft and the bearings were in mean, really good shape so I didn't have to do anything with them. Basically just clean it up and lube it. All right guys, I'm gonna call this the end of part one. In this one, we took a bunch of scrap and spare parts and we put together an Atlas light. So in part two, 
I'm going to make an A-frame table for this. I finally have the material I need. I'm going to wire up the VFD, get the motor working. We're going to test out the counter shaft. We're going to get the belt connected, and we're going to get this thing working. And then once it works, we're going to make something with it. My service grinder needs a new brass nut for the Y-axis lead screw, and I think it'll be a perfect first project for this. That requires a very tight tolerance on the OD, and it's got an internal Acme thread. So that should help, you know, that'll let me test out the accuracy of the lathe, and that'll let me try out the quick change gearbox. It'll be a lot of fun. So I hope you enjoyed watching this video. I hope you got something out of it. You know, if you've got an older Atlas lathe and you want to fit the newer quick change, or if your headstock has died and you want to fit the newer headstock, this is how you do it. It can be done and it, it's not that difficult. So, if you enjoyed watching this video, would you consider subscribing to my channel? I really enjoy making these videos and subscribers are the way of YouTube. So the more subscribers I get, the more my content is recommended, the more views I get, and the more content I can make. So, you know, all good things. Uh, so if you enjoyed this, would you consider subscribing? So with that, guys, I appreciate you taking the time to watch this. Thanks for watching.